let's build a virtual machine server with Proxmox 7. You're watching Make Home Tech. Welcome home tech makers. I'm Joe and I love building technology for my home. I'm getting ready for a new series about machine learning technology at home. Now, experimenting with machine learning is heavy work, and so I'm gonna need a computer I can bash on without taking down my other systems. Remember, reliability is key for home technology, so I'm gonna make sure that my experiments are in a sandbox machine so I don't accidentally trash or lock up any of my critical systems when I do something dumb. I'm building the sandbox with an old computer that was my VMware server. Uh, I'm reformatting everything and installing the latest version of Proxmox. I'm also filming the entire build, even the boot sequences, so you'll know exactly what to expect when you do this yourself. Stay tuned to the end of the video for how to set up Proxmox with a storage space on Synology NAS servers and how to set up automatic backups of your virtual machines. And with that, let's get to the build. We've downloaded the Proxmox installer, but we need to put it on a drive to make it bootable. Just copying the file to a USB drive won't do it. The ISO file is an archive that needs to be unpacked and written to the USB drive in a particular way so that it's bootable. You can do this manually, but the easiest way to do this is with a program like Belena Etcher. Link in the description. All right, quick computer history lesson. ISO or ISO file format was originally developed as a standard for writing to optical media like CD-ROMs and DVDs. 
The format standard was created by the International Standards Organization as ISO 9660, and that's where the .iso file extension comes from. Now, using optical media to distribute and install software has gone the way of the dinosaur, but we still use the file format. And that's why you also hear folks talking about burning an ISO, because back in the day, you used a laser to write data into an optical disk. All right, that's done. Let's install Proxmox. Right, we did it. Once you hit this stage, you can manage Proxmox from a web browser. They'll remember to type the HTTPS, otherwise the web application won't come up, just like I did here. If you've been using Proxmox 6.2 or 6.4, you'll see that there's not much difference in the user interface. The biggest change in this version of Proxmox is the upgrade of the software that makes up the virtual environment, like Debian 11 and Quemu, Q I don't know how to pronounce it, QEMU 6.0. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'd show you how to use the Synology NAS device as storage for Proxmox. So let's get into that now. First, you'll need to set up a file share specifically for Proxmox. Proxmox manages files from the root of whatever that shared directory is. So while you can allow it to use an existing file share, it's best to set up a separate one. You don't need to enable the recyclemen or encryption or do any of the advanced settings, so you can skip all those. Make sure Proxmox has read and write permissions for this file share. I strongly recommend setting up a Proxmox user account with a strong password instead of reusing your own account information. Okay, very important note. To avoid connection problems from Proxmox, you'll need to make sure that your Synology device's maximum SMB, that's the server message block protocol, is set to three. Open up file services, click the SMB tab and the advanced settings button. 
then review the setting for the maximum SMB protocol and make sure that that's set to three. Shout out to Jeremy over at Geeked for figuring this out and posting the solution. Link in the description. Okay, flipping back to the Proxmox interface for a sec, uh, let's switch to the pool view to make sure that you're looking at the correct part of the interface and select the storage tab. Click the add button and select SMB slash CIFS option and you're gonna add a new storage location. ID uh, is whatever you wanna name it uh, and server is the IP address of your Synology NAS. For the content option, this interface is a little weird. Select everything except snippets. Make sure all those options are selected in the dropdown and leave the domain empty and click OK. Done. Okay, last thing and we'll call this done. Backups. Proxmox lets you automatically back up your virtual machines, which is really handy for keeping your systems safe. The backup feature for Proxmox is one of the things that convinced me to stop using VMware because it's so easy to use. To set up automatic backups, click the pool view again and then select backups. Since you set up a file share for storage on your Synology device earlier, you can send your backups there. I recommend setting up weekly backups unless you're changing your virtual systems very frequently or you've got some critical data housed within them. Use the ZS TD compression and snapshot mode and then make sure your attention is set to some reasonable limit. I set mine to three, which means Proxmox will only keep the last three backups of any individual virtual machine. Using virtual machines to manage home systems might seem like a lot of work, but there are some important advantages to using this approach. Number one, being able to build up and tear down virtual machines is very handy for experimenting with new systems and software. Number two, backing up virtual machines that are running critical systems is a breeze with VM managers like Proxmox because you can set it up to run automatically and those systems will continue to run even while they're being backed up. Number three, virtual machines give you a lot of flexibility about how you deploy your computing resources at home. You can ramp up memory and CPU cores for systems that are growing and ramp down systems that don't need full power. And that means you can be more efficient with your computing power at home. I hope this video helps you take the plunge into building and using virtual machines at home. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you're planning to run in your home lab. And if you want some ideas about how to use virtual machines at home, I'll drop a link to Techno Tim's excellent video on this topic. Remember, I'm starting up a new series about machine learning at home, so make sure you're subscribed. And that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, keep learning, keep building, make something great. I'll see you in the next one.